Good afternoon. I'm Natasha Alkington, the TV interviewer for GLF, and I'm here with Wanjira Mathai, who's a senior advisor for the World Resources Institute and, of course, the daughter of the great Wangari Mathai. And uh, she's, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Lovely. So we can begin with just asking you about what's the World Resources Institute? Well, the World Resources Institute is uh, uh, an environmental think tank. There's really the world's leading environmental think tank looking at issues of food security, climate change, and, and the really um, multiple issues, cities and building livable cities, landscapes, which is a subject of our gathering here and trying to see the interface of all of that and what needs to be done to hasten progress across all of those for sustainable development. Oh, interesting. Mm. And then I understand that you've been involved in the AFR 100 gathering uh, in the past yes, few days. Yes, yes. Really, my, my support of the work of WRI is specifically on AFR 100, which is an exciting African-led initiative to restore 100 million hectares of land by 2030. We know that right now, anchored on some of the bigger global ambitious targets of restoring um, 350 million hectares in different places, Africa has committed through the African Union to, to restore 100 million hectares across the continent, a huge political commitment through the, the top leadership of these countries. Mm -hmm. How does that happen? So, of course, AFR 100 is, is the body, the secretariat is at NEPAD, uh, based in Johannesburg, and it is to see through that we, we get pledges from all the African countries to get to 100 million hectares. The good news out of the gatherings we've had over the last two days is that we are not doing so badly. 91 million hectares have been committed oh. by 26 countries. So we have pledges on the table. The goal of this gathering this, this time was really to see how we move those pledges to implementation. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of conversations about how are we doing on this 91 million hectares? It looks good, but are we really making progress? And that's really the, the great work that has to be done is to sustain the momentum that brought those pledges to the table, but then to begin to transform those, to convert those to real landscape restoration. Mm -hmm. So that's the, the, the real hard work right, that right. needs to happen. And do you think it's realistic? Do you think we, we could achieve this? Uh, well, we thing? have to be. Op I'm, I'm an optimist, right? <laughs> so I have to be optimistic about it. I think we can. I think that what we've seen, uh, we had all 26 countries represented at the gathering. Wow. Imagine that. Not one was missing. And all of them with a story to tell. Some, of course, further ahead. Uh, in the work that they've been doing, some beautiful success stories out of Niger, Ethiopia, Kenya. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, momentum. I think sustaining that momentum will be the, the real, uh, where the rubber really meets the road. Right. And, in, and for me, I, I'm excited about the, the, the fact that we have critical things in place. We have political will. We have very strong, all these commitments, I can speak for Kenya, we know that at, at the head of state level, landscape restoration is a priority. Mm -hmm. We have got to restore, uh, it's in our constitution, 10% of our forest, we need 10% forest cover, and that is a constitutional mandate. So that's excellent. But we also need genuine community engagement. Government cannot do it alone. Kenya has committed 5.1 million hectares of land yeah. by 2030. They cannot do it alone as government. We need all hands on deck, so genuine community engagement. And that was showcased. A lot of the success stories we heard about in the last two days had to do with how communities are engaged genuinely in the restoration. And then for me, it's also the planning. There's a lot of planning that needs to, where are these landscapes? For 5.1 million, we have 15 million, Ethiopia having committed the largest number where are those landscapes that will form that 15 million? River rhines, uh, road reserve, croplands, rangelands, forests, new forests, mm -hmm. and putting all that together into a mosaic that forms that landscape commitment. So the work of doing all of that is ahead of us, but it can be done, it must be done. Excellent. So I think we have to wrap up because our session is very short. Yes. So as a, as a closing, as a you know, closing question, why do you think the Global Landscapes Forum is an important place for us to gather? Well, I think the, the, the f any forum that, that brings this issue to the fore is important. But I think I want to mention before we close some important work that the Wangari Mathai Foundation is doing yes. around m mobilizing young people mm -hmm. with the leadership to get these ambitious 
targets done and sustain that momentum really rests on the shoulders of 80% of our population that is under the age of 35. And so for me, the, this forum and the fact that there was a youth portion to this forum is critical. We've got to engage young people. We've got to get them involved in the restoration of our landscapes because this work that 2030, 2065 right. is really about them. Yes, very true. Lovely. Wonderful. Is there yeah. anything else you want to add that you think is important? No, I mean, I think it's great to see. We need more countries committing. We need uh, to move from 91 million to 100 million hectares. So I hope we'll get the same momentum on, that, on the political commitment that we've seen so far. I hope, I hope you do. Yeah. Well, thank you very yes. much for joining us. Thank you. And Thanks I for having me. I hope you enjoy the rest of the, the forum. Thank you. Thank I'm you sure we will. Much. Yes.